Rightio, next tutorial, Adobe XD, slide out menu design. Let's get started. Hey guys, you're watching Gnowski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to jump into Adobe XD and learn how to create a slide out menu design. And if you'd like to follow along, there is a link in the video description to download the XD file that you're gonna see in a moment so you can follow along. But without further ado, let's jump into Adobe XD. And yeah, I am gonna, I'm gonna keep the glasses on for the duration of this video. We'll jump into XD and I'll show you how to create this effect. So you can see I'm in XD now. And here we have two artboards that I've created. So we have one here that is a content feed on the right. And we've got the slide out menu on the left. And in fact, I'm actually just gonna swap these around. I think it's gonna make a little bit more sense to me in my head. But you might have them a different way around. It's entirely up to you. So first of all, I've created the content. If I go to the layers panel in the bottom left corner, I can just click on each of these artboards and you can see I've named all of the layers. So structuring your files, your artboards in XD is super important. And when we animate this in a moment using XD's auto animate feature, we're gonna need to have our layers named the same across each of the artboards so that XD knows which bits to auto animate. So if I jump over here as well, you can see this artboard has a similar structure with all of the layers named as well. So I've named everything, I've kept everything lowercase, no spaces, just hyphens. So I kind of have like a little bit of a, a naming system for all of my layers. It just makes things so much easier with everything kind of tidied up like that. Okay, so you can see we have the content feed here. We have the slide out menu here. Now you can use XD's overlay feature to have a menu overlay if you want, but we're gonna be doing kind of more of a, like a slide, like a push a little bit. I'll show you what I mean. So we can actually go and set up the animation itself right now. It's really quick and easy. So when the user clicks on this menu icon here, it's gonna slide out and then they can click on the cross and it's gonna slide back in. So if we go over to prototype mode at the top, what I can do is click on the menu icon. This is a grouped icon. These three lines have been grouped together and I can click on the blue tab and drag this over to this artboard. So when a user taps, that's the trigger. When they tap on the menu icon, the action is an auto animate and you can choose your easing type. Definitely experiment with some of these, but I'm gonna just keep it ease in out, nice and simple, and then press 0.5 as a duration, press return. And then what I'm gonna do is click on the cross or the close icon and just drag this back. And you can leave those settings the same, or what you can do is just click previous artboard and then it will reverse the transition. So whatever this transition is, it will just reverse the whole thing. That's it. That's pretty much it for the kind of prototyping thing. But of course we need to create some kind of animation. If I just go and play this now at the moment, you can see it just fades and that looks fine, but we're gonna add a bit more life to this. So first of all, what I'm going to do is just drag over all of the content on this artboard and then go up to edit down to copy and then jump over to this artboard on the right and go edit and paste. And then what I'm gonna do is use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move this around. Now you can use up, down, left and right and it moves everything that is selected one pixel. If you hold down shift while doing that, it will move it 10 pixels. So this is quite a good way to move content around. And you can see I can actually move this off the artboard. And if I select something else, any any time that I have this artboard selected, it will show me content that is outside of the artboard, but still included in this kind of like faded color. And there you go, I clicked off the artboard, so it's gone. So if you do have any difficulty selecting content outside of the artboard, what you can do is just go up here and you've got all of your layers. So you can see dragging over doesn't really work. So I'm just gonna hold shift and just select all of the different pieces of content and I can move this around. And I think what I'll do is I'll just hold shift and just go one, two, three, four, five with the right arrow key. 
So it's then going to do something like this. So if I click the play and then the menu icon, you can see it pushes that content. So that's all good. That's all good. Now we can have a bit more fun with the menu itself. So first of all, what I'm going to do is drag over everything on the menu, obviously excluding the status bar and the home indicator for the iPhone. Those are both locked. And again, go to edit, copy, jump back over to the feed or the, uh, sorry, the store artboard and then go edit and paste. And again, hold shift and use the left arrow key. So we'll nudge this out of the artboard. In fact, I could even just drag this so it snaps to the edge. So it's gonna slide in from the left. And if I play this now, click the menu icon, slides in, pushes the content out, click the close, it just pushes it back. So it's always worth just making sure that any fixed elements like the status bar and the home indicator or any kind of UI elements specific to the operating system, whether it's Android or iOS, just make sure that is at the very top. There we go. And I'll just double check that on here. Bring this all the way to the top. And then I can click back on this artboard and you can see that this is faded out because it's actually outside of the artboard, but it's still part of the artboard. So all the layers and everything appear over here. And we can get a bit more creative now. So what I'm gonna do is, well, let's look for the shield icon. It's getting kind of harder to see through the glasses. I'm gonna keep them on though. I've committed to it now. Okay, so I've got the shield icon. So I'm just gonna hold shift and use the arrow keys to move this up. And what else could we do? We could select the store link and I'll hold shift and go one, two, three, four, five with the left arrow key. And then the locations link will go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna move these out. So you can see sometimes it doesn't always select what I actually click on and it selects this large rectangle even though it's underneath. If you get any issues like that with selecting things, just go over to your layers panel and you'll be able to select it there. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now the reason that I'm counting how many times I press the arrow key whilst holding shift is that I want a consistent stagger. If I just did this manually, they would all come in uh, and it wouldn't be like really, really smooth. So what I'm doing with this staggering effect, as you'll see in a minute, is they will all come in at a slightly different time. So the store one will arrive at this point here first, location will arrive second, and it's gonna look really, really smart. And lastly, we've got the button down here. So again, you can see by clicking it, selects the rectangle for some reason. Um, so I need to just find this. And again, this is why it's really good to use folders and layer names, because now I can just scan down here and go, there we go, button, tap here to log out. I know where those uh, layers are. And what I can do is just go shift, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then that is gonna slide up from the bottom. In fact, I'm actually gonna nudge this outside the artboard. And if I click on the shield icon, I'm actually gonna drop the opacity of that. So it's gonna fade in and transition to this position at the same time. And the last change is I'm actually gonna select the menu icon over here and bring the opacity to zero. Because of course I don't want a, a menu icon and a cross, that could be a bit confusing. I want the user to see that there is a cross uh, or a close icon on this and that's what will take them back. So just to recap, if I click over here, what's gonna happen is all of these elements, I've moved the position of them, I've changed the opacity, they're all going to auto animate into the positions over here on the right. So if I play this now, so we click on the menu icon, everything just slides in. You see that nice little stagger there as well. And if I click this again up here, we can just play that again. So the shield just drops down. This slides in staggered, so the store comes in first. It just adds like, like it's a really subtle touch, but it just makes such a difference. And then this slides in for the bottom. Come on, one more time. Boom, slides in. Click on the cross, slides 
out. Rightio, so there we go. That's how to create a slick sliding menu animation using the auto animate feature all in Adobe XD. And remember, if you want to have a go at this yourself, there is a link to download the XD file in the video description. Questions or comments down there as well. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.